better. Hello everyone, how are you doing? And you're very welcome to this week's uh, last word on Formula One with myself, Aidan Rafferty. And of course, as always, we have the the expert, the last word in Formula One, as they say, Michael O'Grady. Hello, <laughs> Michael, how are you? Are you well? Not too bad, not too bad, you know, the expert and all that sort of crack. Yes, yeah, wonderful. Well, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, as is reflected... As is reflected in his choice of uh, of polo shirt this week, and uh, yes, yes, folks, once again he's going by the cover name of Zoom user. Well, Zoom, Zoom user, user. <laughs> <laughs> I can't put anything else. You know what it's going to be like. David Coulthard will be sending me messages. Jackie Shaw will be outside to be me. I just I won't get any peace. Well, sure, this is it, you know, when you're good, you're good in that, you know, and you're, you know, you're you're in the inner sanctum of the, the world of Formula One, like, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, look at last week to cancel it just because I wasn't there. I mean, well, you know, I mean, what? Yeah. <laughs> no, not that you're bragging or anything or not that you're. Not that I'm bragging or anything. No, I wouldn't do anything like that. Or you're, you're not swimming in the well of uh, self-importance or anything, you know, to get. To get oh, there. no, not at all, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> So uh, I suppose we start off the show. Um, we're looking ahead to this week's uh, this weekend's Formula One Grand Prix, and that is the Monaco Grand Prix. Yes, and controversial as we're we we never are we're never controversial here. But I have to admit, hand on heart, I've said it last year. I said it the year before. Quite the most boring race in the Formula One calendar. Nothing ever happens. <laughs> I think you, might have, said it. I think you might have said it the, the year before as well, maybe. I think I said it the year before now too, yeah. I'm not saying, you know, it's it's great if you can see these cars, even if you get to go and see these cars hurtling around these tracks. Absolutely amazing what they can do and the speed they can do it at. But, you know, as we all know, overtaking in Monaco, Right, that doesn't really happen. <laughs> so it's a bit like the street it's of Wexford. It doesn't. It doesn't. Well, really basically, happen. yeah. Well, well, Wexford would be probably wider than Monaco, and that's saying something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that is saying something. Uh, but um, you know, if you start in first place, you don't make any big mistakes, and you know, you make sure you pit when everyone else does. There's a good chance you're going to finish in first place. So it's a. Uh, it's a little bit of a, I, I, I suppose it's not a race I overly look forward to um, compared to other races, which is unfortunate. But look, it is what it is, isn't it? Well, this is this is it. So uh, I suppose we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, look at the the standings, obviously, because there was no uh, no actually w- with regards to that race um, that that was it was cancelled. Will that be? On again later on in the season, or will it be just one less, uh, just just one less Grand Prix in the season? Oh, it'll be one less Grand Prix in the season. It's, it, it's kind of too too difficult to reprogram it. Um, I mean, even as the year goes on, you know, you're seeing a lot of races back to back these days. Um, compared to what they used to be like, and of course, the problem with the races being back to back is, you know, it's very hard to fit anyone else in. And personally, I, I wouldn't like being overly, you know going to Monaco or anywhere like that or you know going back to Italy when it gets September October November uh, the weather will be very bad and it just it won't suit the situation you know yourself so um I suppose looking ahead um obviously you know that there's the qualifiers and that but the, the schedule for the weekend is you know on the 28th or the 26th uh the 26th of May practice one from 12 30 to 1 30. Uh, on the 26th mm-hmm. again later on then from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock is practice session 2 uh, on the 27th is practice session 3 from uh, 11.30 to 12.30 and on, mm-hmm. on, later on in, on the 27th then is the qualifying um, from five from uh, 3 o'clock until 4 now you know I've looked at the you're lo- looking at the um, the track here it's a very complicated it's a very complicated track with a lot of bends and uh yeah it's a very unusual shape it is a, it is a street circuit i suppose so it is what it is to a certain extent and they do have a DRS zone which is on the main straight i can't really see there being been much overtaken on that straight zone personally because it is quite short and it kinks into I suppose what would be a 90 degree bend, but the way they have the kind of exit of the pit on it, it's nearly a 110 degree bend. Again, they're finished with it. You know, it's quite sharp. 
And, um, you know, it's a good place to pick up a penalty now if you get a bit overly excited by the time you hit that corner and try and, as they say, undertake a fella that's uh, that's yeah. uh, right beside you. you know? So, yeah, it's kind I suppose of... it's been easy enough. It's been easy enough not to pick up penalty points this season in in, in, uh, in the uh, in, in the form, in the Grand Prix so far this season, hasn't it? It seems to be easy to pick up penalty points no matter what you do these days. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and we're not on about what? penalty points for speed. And, well, it, it'll be speeding anyway, but you know what I mean. Not uh, not points on your license now, but uh, points that could cost you a race or could it, it could affect how you finish the uh, you know I suppose the the rest of the, the rest of the season, but more so. It could come into play at the end when when the, the places are totted up and where you could potentially finish. Absolutely, you know. So I mean, the funny thing is about about Monaco now is qualifying will be nearly more exciting than the race. I'll tell you why because everyone needs to be first. <laughs> you know, you need to be first off that grid in Monaco, and provided you get a reasonable start. You're going to be first in one go. That's where the big issues are going to be. Now, Now this weekend, you know, it's like every other weekend in Monaco. It's like every other race. It's all those predictions and things like that. A peculiar prediction I did see going around, and I delved into it a little bit, is a lot of people are predicting that um, Charles Leclerc, who is from Monaco himself, is actually going to win this weekend. I find that a mice hard to believe, personally, but I suppose, look, maybe some people know, t- know things that we don't. You know, it's his home race. It was a disaster last year. So I'm I'm sure he wants to build a win at this year, as I say. He knows this area better than anyone else. I mean, he used to go to school and walk down part of the route going to school in the mornings, you know. So, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see. He's, on, he's on his home turf. And I suppose it's kind of like in any sport when you're, when you're on home turf, you know it intimately and, and things like that. And you the pitfalls mm. and things like that. So you you know it, home advantage is quite good. But then, you know, when you throw in at the quality of Max Verstappen and other drivers, it's exactly. not going to be it's not going to be an easy feat for him. But I suppose you know mm. it's quite possible. And I suppose, uh, look looking at the standings as well from your point from your point of view, looking at it at the moment, is it still kind of wide open? There isn't any. Is there? A huge gap now open between one driver and the next, or the 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 driver on top and the next one below, the next one below him, or you know, what what are your thoughts on that end of it? You couldn't say it's huge at the minute. Um, yeah. I mean, we are all at this stage. Everybody believes it's going to be a Red Bull one two at the end of the year. Like, who's going to win it? That that. That's a good question. That's a question that everybody's asking. But I mean, you know, Max Verstappen's 119, and I see here Fernando Alonso 75. If he Max did make two races, if Fernando won him, Fernando's ahead of him. So it's not as cut and dry, I suppose, just yet. Um, there, there still is. You it's know, still there, early there still in the season people. as well. I mean, it's kind of early to mid season so those yeah. uh, I suppose yeah I suppose on one hand you, you do want to kind of start gathering the points but you know if, if you don't finish in the top five for example you're not going to panic because you know you can still kind of get races to catch up on other on other drivers um, higher up the standings absolutely and that's 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 where everybody's aiming and Charles Leclerc needs I mean I think out of everybody this weekend Charles Sinclair needs to win this. I, I mean, at the moment, he's, he's way down at points. Um, hang on one second now. Because I had him up there a second ago, and now I've gone and left him behind. Uh, you know, he's he's just had such a bad start um, to this year. And it being his home race, it, it's a great place to, to sort of charge forwards if you can. He's actually currently in seventh on a lowly 34 points. Um you know, he shouldn't be in seventh. He should be higher. Um, but, you know, he's got to start that charge at some stage, just to say. So, I mean, that's going to be interesting. There is going to be a big dice um, for qualifying. I mean, everybody's going to want it, you know, but it's kind of, at the moment, yeah, I can see the frustration of Ferrari and Charles Leclerc building and building and building and building. It just, it doesn't seem to really... It's not paying off for them this year. I, I, I do not know why I have to admit, you know. But look, 
Monaco is a different situation. Anything can happen in Monaco. I remember when the Mercedes, Michael Schumacher was driving their Mercedes. They, Mercedes were absolutely nowhere. Middle of the pack was about as good as a get. And, you know, the thing about Monaco is a good driver is more important than a good car. And Schumacher puts himself on pole, you know. So, I mean... The car may not be there, but once you're up in front, now he did get a, a penalty, I think, at the time, so he didn't actually start first. But once you're up at the front in Monaco, you know, you, you, you've got it there. It is a very short track as well. It's only yeah. slightly over, I think, three and a quarter kilometers. So it, it goes around very, very, very quickly. And it does have its own sort of quirks to the FIA rules as well. Don't ask me what they are. I don't know if you've ever seen the FIA rules. I wouldn't have the time uh, to read uh, through the 12,000 pages of rules that they have. Well, I, well I, um, I think they're actually, when they're handing out penalties, they're there throwing pages everywhere and going, I don't uh, have time to read this. What are you talking about? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you'd have to be getting paid an awful lot to be going through them. But I suppose, you know, with this race in mind, uh, you know, it, it is one of those, um, I suppose, destinations or one of those places where there's a Formula One race that, um, you, you know, it's not like Brazil or Australia or we say the Miami Grand Prix or that where, you know, oh, yeah, you know, it's going to be hot. I mean, you, you know, in Monaco, it could be lovely and warm. But it could be a you could have a haymaker of a shower for the full afternoon yeah. <laughs> during the race, and I suppose really this is this is where you, you, I suppose for for the drivers and for the uh, for the engineers and mechanics and that is what tire do you go for because you have to be ready for kind of all all eventualities. I mean, you oh, know, you when they're putting the tires on, it could be you know a lovely day, and you you be putting on a certain amount of tires, and then just before you go out onto the on onto the track, then it could lash rain, and you might end up having to uh, change the tires again, which could uh, you know it, it, it's um, obviously they have uh, uh, you know a plan A and a plan B, but you know the, these are the kind of things it's hard to kind of make decisions on, isn't it? And of course, um, oh, Obviously, pit stop, um, pit stops as well. Uh, I think everybody will be covering everybody else. Uh, the first one to blink, everyone will follow him. Um, I would say uh, that's probably the way Monaco is going to go because the only time you're going to jump somebody is in the pits. Um, you know, it's a great opportunity if you can get down and blitz a lap and you were right behind them a few minutes ago and there's nobody in front of you, and then he has to go around and change his tires a lap later. Yeah, it's a great way of jumping people in Monaco. It's such a short track, you can get around so quickly. You know, so I mean, that's about the only way. Now, as for the weather, yeah, it's supposed to be sunny this weekend. They're saying less than 20% chance of rain. Now, <laughs> I don't know who predicts the weather, but if there's anybody like who predicts the weather here, 20% chance of rain. Could You're about that, that man from Donegal, <laughs> up, up in Donegal, he's fairly handy at it, all right. Oh, well, there you go, you know. But, but I, I think he only does it in Ireland, though, doesn't he, yeah? Well, normally, yes, normally. Now, they are expecting a high of 25 to 26 this degrees. Is the weather, this is the weather forecast, folks. So uh, here we yes. go. The weather for the weekend here in Ireland is... Uh... Well, Irish weather for the weekend won't be as good as this. <laughs> <laughs> in fairness, we're doing well. We can't argue. Well, we are doing down well down here in the sunny southeast anyway. Uh, yeah. but, That's always um, sunny there, even in the middle of winter it is, you know. <laughs> well, it's with sunny and gorgeous today, so I'm not. We, we we won't we won't mention Westmead either. You know uh, that that might be a bit oh, of a sore point. You got in trouble the last time you did that. Now, <laughs> remember, <laughs> <laughs> cast your mind back. <laughs> yes. But that that's what they're saying for the weather forecast. Now, I mean. The tires, uh, it's the usual sort of situation. They're bringing the C3 hard, C4 medium, and C5 soft. Again, it, it's just their way to try and make sure the tires last X amount of time. Because we know Formula One is no longer at who has the best tires. It's no longer about anything like that. The tires are designed to do so much and, and to wear, you know, so mm -hmm. they're not going to last forever it does depend on which car is better on what tire than the other and this is where you have to watch is it, if, if it's, because it's a shorter track does that mean the tires mm -hmm. might last a bit longer or does that well, does that now, not matter 
Well, it's just distance wise, really. You know yeah. what I mean? Lap wise, yeah, because it's a short track. But I mean, distance wise, no, not really. They're, they're just, I mean, they're saying, what tyre compound are you bringing? And everyone is, ooh, they're bringing it. They're just bringing it because they reckon, you know, we should get a similar situation for pit stops in this race as we did last race, even though it's a totally different track. So they'll bring a more durable soft probably for Monaco because, you know, those corners. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen a, cam, a Formula One car going around one of those corners up close, but, you know, there's still tyres left on them by the time. Car cam, finished, huh? I, yeah. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. really don't. It says here they are actually, um, they're recommending a three and a half degree minus three and a half degree camber on the front tires and a minus two and a half degree camber on the rear tires. Uh, now, uh, as to exactly what's that going to do, that's beyond my pay grade, but I do know what camber is at least. And um, they're looking at 21 psi for the front and 19 and a half psi for the rear. My car runs on 35 psi, so it's obviously a different type of animal completely. <laughs> oh, you're being modest. <laughs> know yourself uh, well I mean last year now the race was you know, reasonably okay last year I suppose in Monaco pole position was by Charles de Clare Ferrari now I'm reading here it's a 111.376 which is a very 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 quick time I don't see much of an increase on that um, because the cars are pretty much similar to last year yeah they've tweaked them but you know, at the same time, they haven't really... It's only been a year since they were here last time and since they had the new car. So it, it's kind of hard to make them, you know, make a big difference in a year as they other than Aston Martin, of course. And, uh, of course, we had um, Sergio Perez won it last year, which was quite interesting. But Max Verstappen in third place, the Ferrari in second. Now, if you cast your mind back, there was a big, massive mistake by Ferrari. Uh, because Charles Leclerc should have won the race. Um, and that is, call him in for tyres. He came out first. Then they called both cars back for tyres again. And by the time he pulled in, someone went, whoops, we weren't calling, we weren't supposed to call you in. And he ended up in fourth place. And he was first and scheduled to win if the race. If that didn't so happen, where, sure where, would, where would he have uh, maybe finished? Well, I'd say if he hadn't been called in, he had the race. He did. He was yeah. fast enough for everybody. But, of course, once he hit Ford, you can't overtake. And he even said he can't overtake. He's going to be here now for the rest of the race. You know, a, a very unhappy Charles Leclerc. So he's kind of hoping that... I, th I think he's just justifiably the... unhappy. I mean, you know, he, he was, as you said, like, you know, if, if he was in... Uh... Prime position, and he would have he would have won it had, had he not been called yeah. in. And then the, yeah. whoever makes the decision to call him in to, for the tire change, uh, you know that that guy should be. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, well, actually. He, Sarah thought there was something wrong with the car because it was only a couple of laps. You know, he thought, right, yeah. there's something wrong. Someone done something. Maybe oh, he that's thought why there the, was... That's why the... All right, yeah, I see where you're coming from. Yeah, you know, that's what he thought. So he, he obeyed as he should go. And what? Back in again? Uh, and and obeyed as he as he should do. You should have, you know what I mean. You're supposed to listen. The engineers are supposed to know what they're doing. But no, it was a complete and utter yeah mistake. Fastest lap last year went to Lando Norris in the McLaren. Um, we don't hear that too often now. I have to admit it. A one fourteen six, uh, nearly one fifteen to be honest with you. Closing on it. When you look at pole position being the one eleven, it does make a bit of a difference, doesn't it? When you have a lot less fuel in the car, mm. as they say now. The first Monaco Grand Prix was in 1929. So this is, this race has been on the calendar for so long. Whoa, it's not far off its 100 year anniversary, really. I wonder what they're going to do with that. Um, there you go. Be something interesting, I would hope. The man who has won around Monaco more than anybody else is, of course, the great Ayrton Senna. Um, absolute master around this track. But, you know, a man that even himself said, if you're going to be in the Monaco Grand Prix to win, you have to start on pole position. Um, so, I mean, even you would himself as to say, you know, now the most wins for the constructors is actually McLaren have won it more than any other team on the planet. That's pretty impressive now, I have to admit, yeah. when, you, when you think, you know, it's, it's a pity McLaren are sort of so behind it these days. You know, you'd like to see them pulling back up again, as they say, you know, but you're looking maybe someday, maybe someday they'll pull an Aston Martin out of the bag and, and, and we'll be off again, as they say, you know, yourself. This actually, 
this is a, a race that's kind of very prestigious, if you get me. It's right up there. There's, there's a kind of a, they call it the triple crown of motorsport. It's not really a, a, an official thing. But I, I think as a driver, um, if you can win Monaco, if you can win the 24-hour of Le Mans, and if you can win the Indianapolis 500, that's three very different races. But if you can win those, that is the triple crown of motor racing. And that's what... There's just you back of a postage stamp time, <laughs> you yeah. know. And yeah. I suppose from a from a driver's point of view, you know, you were saying there that uh, you know it's it's a shorter track than the, than the rest of them. I suppose from from that point of view, uh, from a driver's point of view, do they do they like it for that for for that fact, or do they hate it for that fact that it's shorter? I'm sure. I'm sure it's a bit of both, really. I mean, you know, those drivers will know these tracks in and out. You know, they will know these tracks. They'll know where they're supposed to break before they even get to the corner. They will know it that well. They'll be like you going out your front door and walking down to the tops. You know where the traffic's going to be. You know where the people are going to be. That, that's the way these guys are. They will know. So, I mean, the shorter track is maybe less information in a certain amount. But the difference is, you know, it's 78 laps. And I'm sure after about lap 70, you're going, is this ever going to end? <laughs> yeah. You know, because I suppose, look, it's like everything. You get used to see checker flag 65 to 70 times in a race. And suddenly now you're going 78 times in a race. You know, kind of, I, I'm sure it's a bit of putting for that towards the end of the race. You know, probably simpler originally, but. I think even the drivers themselves know if you're if you're not if you're not at least in the top three, you ain't gonna win. <laughs> yeah. Know? Now I it's suppose from from, um, from the point of view of you know it's been what was it three three weeks, four weeks since the Miami Grand Prix. Um, yeah. In that time, have have any of the teams made any adjustments to the car? And if so, what sort of impact would that have on on the on this race? Or what adjustments do you, have you heard? Maybe was made if there was any made at all. I don't think there was much done. I think it would all be minor tweaking because, of course, you know, the race last week was cancelled uh, at like the eleventh hour. You know, everyone's geared up. Everyone's but on in the that case, going... Michael. What did they do when I I know it's probably the first time that something like that has happened where a a Grand Prix was um what was cancelled. But what did they do in that case? I mean, as in like, do they do the plan for the next race? Do they just <laughs> do they take the weekend off and, and, and just do what they want? Or um I suppose there's probably planning meetings and things like that on or you know, I suppose it's just tending to the car, is it? Well, it's like everything, nobody wants a race to be cancelled because, you know, some drivers will be saying, this is my track, I'm going to do a bit better on this track. Like, you know what I mean? The Italian tracks tend to suit uh, Ferrari very much. So, I mean, you know, cancelling a European track for them is a bit of a disaster area. But, um, no, really, it would be, you know, right, lads, OK, back to the factory as quickly as possible. Get everything back on the plane or the boats. Get everything in the trucks. Ship it back now. And we get a bit of extra time back in the factory for the next race. Um, and it mightn't be very much because, you know, yourself, there's trucks and trucks and trucks and trucks and stuff going from A to B. It's, it, it's mesmerizing when you see these guys putting this whole thing together, taking it apart again. You know, it's, it's absolutely amazing. But as for time off, no, the drivers will be back nearly straight away and into a car and um, mm -hmm. planning for the next race and driving. And, you know, a, an extra day of, of practice makes a big difference. You know, it does make a big difference to the following race. So, no, it would have been business as usual. And I'd say there won't be a whole pile of anything done to any of the cars because, I, I'm sure you know yourself if you're heading off to anything and it's cancelled the, the day before or a couple of days before uh, it kind of throws a spanner into the works you know yeah, kind of yeah. throws everybody off you know it's everything just goes sideways and people are kind of scratching their heads going what are we doing sorry you know and it kind of just throws everybody off so I, I, I'm sure it hasn't really I, I, it's, it was detrimental in certain ways in that you know the things they could have done if it was cancelled earlier but look that that can't be helped just on that particular item. Actually, I noticed that uh, Formula One have donated a million um, to the region's agency for safety and civil protection. And that after the disaster that, you know, happened with the the water and the, the, the you know, the weather and all around that area. So um, it's nice of F1 just to give a little bit back, as they say, you know, just to. You know, after the disaster it was, it's nice for him to give him back. Mind you, 
you know, you you could point out that a million euros in in uh, in Formula One is nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's only, the, it's only, it's only like a euro or five euro tolls or whatever. Yeah, it's probably you know it's it's although it's, if you it's don't probably... have it, a fiver can sound like an awful lot. That's true, I suppose, to a certain extent, yeah, you know. But I mean, a million quid in Formula One might get you tires for two weeks. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 not an awful lot of money, really, you know. So I mean, it's it, it is it, it it's going to be it, it is going to be. Well, I mean, it would go, uh, It's going to be a lot of quid sounds a million quid sounds like a lot of money, but would it go far when it comes to? All the all the stuff that was you know repairing things after after what happened like, uh, for, would a million it euro go would, far? Yes, it, it probably would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It probably would. Yeah. Oh no, no, I could see that actually. It Depending would, on the, it expense. would go a long way in that case, but but still at the same time, you know. <laughs> Look, yeah. they, did, they did something. I suppose we can't be too critical about that. At least they did something. But the teams are, yeah, they're they're going ahead then for later because the problem with Monaco, of course, is the, the big one and the big sign that should be out of the place is beware of the traffic. Uh, because, of course, with Monaco, and this is where their plans are going to be critical, you're going to want to stay ahead no matter yeah. what. So pitting early is probably not going to happen because you're not going to overtake anybody when you're back out again. So mm-hmm. your tires are wearing down and wearing down and wearing down. And you're probably going to ho- hope that you jump people. But yeah, traffic in Monaco is an absolute disaster area. Now, there is, I suppose, a, a, an overcut where if you can stay out a bit longer, um, you might push in a bit of distance. But that really depends on who's behind you. You know, if you're in first place and Max Verstappen has just got new tires and is behind you, I'd pit, <laughs> you know, yeah. personally very quickly. Whereas now, with the speed the Mercedes are doing at the minute, if there was a Mercedes behind you, you might stay out three or four laps because yeah. they're not as quick or a, a McLaren behind you. Or something like that, you know. So I mean, it is, it, it is going to be unusual. Now another thing the drivers have to do because there has been a lot of games with the teams in Monaco. Um, you know, kind of this driver, that that driver, things like this is not as simple as this track because it's so narrow. I've actually seen a situation where one guy was letting his teammate by and the two rip over each other, and yeah. suddenly the race is black flag, red flags because. You know, one stripped or the other, just by letting them buy, is to say, you know. And uh, I suppose another thing you could say about Monaco uh, communication is critical, especially in the case of Charles Leclerc. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And uh, if, if you're to go by Mercedes, I suppose, you know, it's 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 one thing Lewis Hamilton never n- never falls short of doing, but uh, I suppose you, you know, with all uh, those things in mind, I suppose, uh, who, who would be your, t- your top five? And like, have you a dark uh, horse for for this race? I think the dark horse for this race is Fernando Alonso. We'll come back to that in the news in a minute, but um, you know, he's always a dark horse is our Fernando Alonso, and he knows he's you know he's not he, he is older, but that means he knows it better. You know what I mean? He knows what to do, knows where he has to be, and at the minute, oh, I. You know, third place, third place, fourth place, third. You know, he's done very well for himself. Yeah. So he's wanting to push because Fernando is convinced and he's stating they are going to win a race this year. And Monaco, if you can get in pole position, the only person's going to lose it is you. <laughs> you know, you can keep ahead and you watch what the guys behind you are doing and you do the same thing. If their tires come out, you're pitting as well. Of course, they could run a dummy on that, but there are rules and regulations against that too. Doesn't always come to fruition, but you know yourself. Fernando is a dark horse in this one, definitely. It's it's going to depend on qualifying. If you see one, two, three in qualifying, there's a very good chance they're going to be one, two, three at the end of the race. Unless someone gets a bad call, someone crashes, makes a mistake, you know. So, I mean, it's all going to be push, push, push for the start. I think Max Verstappen's unstoppable. But I do think Fernando Alonso might end up ahead of Checo this race and he might get his first second place. Um, George Russell is always to be, um, never to be underestimated. Um, He's only not really driving that long and he's an absolute cracking driver. He really, really, really is. And he's in a good situation. Mercedes like him. 
Everybody likes him. He's happy where he is. He's had a few bad calls this year again, but, you know, he likes where he is. He's doing well. He's a driver of the future, really, you know. Uh, Lewis, I am not sure. Lewis has had a lot of distractions this week, which we'll come to in a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's had a lot of distractions this week. So I'm not sure how well he's going to do this weekend. But it's definitely... Yeah, there's a lot of people tipping Charles Charles Leclerc. I can't see it. Uh, maybe it's just me. I, I I'm a Ferrari fan ultimately, and an Aston Martin fan as well. But I I just can't see it. They just it's been very lackluster up to now. It's been very disappointing year so yeah. far. They need to do something about it. But you know, is it already? You know, is there, is there kind of a habit forming this year already, and it won't get any better? That's yeah. the big question there. So I'd say yeah, I'd say Max. And I reckon Fernando Alonso might split the Red Bulls, and I'm not always right, but I'm never wrong. <laughs> well, that's that's a, that's a that's a good pol- political answer there. So first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So so obviously Max Verstappen first. Yeah, I'm gonna put Alonso in second. It's a bit of a chancy one, but I'm gonna put Alonso in second. Um, they're on a high at the minute. Their gaps are getting a little bit higher now uh, with a bit of good news, and um, Checo will be third. I'd say you'll see Leclerc and Ford. Uh, yeah. That's where I say Charles Leclerc might end up. Now it could be different. There are a lot of people still saying he's going to win. Um, yeah. I don't know why people are saying he's going to win. Maybe they know something I don't. Fifth, ah, well, fifth, it has to be George Russell. I'd George say Russell. George will do a big push along the way on that one. So I'm I'm kind of hoping he, he deserves it really. He deserves yeah. he deserves to do well here. So so that's my top five. Um and, and if I'm wrong, uh I'm not really something happened. <laughs> that's it, yeah, technical difficulties. So uh, I suppose with four second with four minutes left then uh, what's the latest news? The latest news is a good one and this is where things are going to, to go sideways. First of all, good news for Aston Martin. Uh, because um, what's the is is it Lannigan's ball is called or Lannigan's ball or something? You know, I stepped out and I stepped in again. Oh, uh, right, yeah. I heard you wrote Honda. that song yourself, and Paul Egan wrote that song, was it? Oh, I actually think Honda wrote the song because oh, you I remember said. Honda with, with Red Bull and then <laughs> we're leaving Red Bull and Red Bull won, so we'd stay another year. And then oh, Red Bull won another. What's another year? Yeah, Johnny so, Logan song there. Though. What's another year? Absolutely. And then See, we're going all your vision here. Yeah, we'll go now. Honda are no longer in F1. We're leaving now. That's it. Now, now they're coming back with Aston Martin. So Aston Martin are actually getting a Honda engine next year. Now, I mean, oh, Honda would drive you absolutely insane. They make great engines. They had great wins with uh, Red Bull. You'd think they'd be still going with them, considering the fact that Red Bull were still winning. Uh, but no. And so many times Honda have come into Formula One to do okay. And they suddenly do brilliant, then to disappear. And three or four years later, they're back again. And it's exactly what's going there. Now, it has been hailed by a lot of people. Lance Stroll said it's the final piece of the jigsaw for Aston Martin. Aston Martin are very happy about it too. Um, It's going to be a full-scale return, they're saying. It's not next year, actually. It's 2026, full-scale return. But they're going to be in helping the guys from day one. Um, Because, of course, they've got a bit of a curve to learn themselves to get to where they are. And, you know, Fernando Alonso is very happy about this. I don't think that man's going to go anywhere quite some time. He is predicting a win this year and he's predicting that they could actually be unstoppable with Honda. Yeah. We shall wait and see. Back to the other bit of news. And I, I'm looking at it here because I know there is an issue here. Um, There has been talks about Lewis Hamilton going to Ferrari. Now, Lewis has balls out at the moment. He's he's a guy who doesn't like to lose, and he's not happy. He's not happy where he is. We know this. He never is happy. He's also not, yeah, well, he's also not happy about something else, and I would just find this here. Um, he's also not happy about something else. The highest paid athletes at the moment in 2023, age 25 and under, Max Verstappen is third. Uh, whoa, 64 million a year. Um, you know, now really? there is a soccer player ahead. Minimum wage. Yeah. <laughs> there's uh, Kyler Murray, who's an American football player. He's higher. And uh, there's, what is it, Killian Mbappe. I think he's a soccer player, is he? I, I have no yeah, idea about he soccer. Is, yeah. He's, he's up 120 million a year. But since this has been announced, 
he's not happy. Right. <laughs> Lewis God. Hamilton is not happy since this is announced. So there is massive rumours at the minute that he is making this big four-year deal with Ferrari and that he's going to take over the team and lead the team to victory. And he's going to get this and he's going to get that and he's going to get the other. And on the other hand, Ferrari are being quiet about it. Uh, Toto Wolff is saying, no, he's staying with us. And sort of Charles Leclerc is going, well, I'm in Ferrari. He's not getting my seat. And he's the number one driver. So, Well, I mean, at least they are getting paid. You know, that's the... That's the... <laughs> They are getting away, that's so there is that too. too. <laughs> you know, like they're that's, when you, when you look around the world and you see what's going on. Uh, yeah, well, that's it, very true, but it's you know, it's they it, do put it, in, it's they do dedicate a lot of time to it, but you know, I suppose they, they do deserve uh, they know, do, yeah. But uh, so mm -hmm. listen, thanks very much it's, for it's, taking it's the time so thanks very much for taking the time out to do, uh, Formula One with us, and we look forward to doing it all again next week. Perfect. No problem. Thanks very much. Uh